What's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another NBA slash NBL video and discussion to talk about with you guys and in today's video I'm going to be going over potential NBA players that I think it could potentially join the NBL in the upcoming season or so. Now obviously a lot of things have been happening with the NBL. For those of you who don't know, it's literally changed so much like it used to be a league where no one really ever played in or anything like that and in two years they signed some of the biggest names like Andrew Bogut, Lamelo Ball, um, RJ Hampton, etc. The list goes on, which is a bunch of really good players. And now I'm moving on to even more players. For example, a player who I'm going to be talking about later, which is a player that I think is pretty much already locked in to join the NBL. A lot of people have already been known that he was going to kind of join the NBL. But yeah, so without further ado, let's get in with the first player of, I think, could potentially join the NBL, and that is Tyler Ulis or Ulis. I don't know. A lot of people pronounce his name a little bit different, but I potentially think he is another player who could really join the NBA. And for those of you who don't know who Tyler is, for, uh, he actually was drafted at pick 34 to the Phoenix Suns in the 2016 draft. Came in and was like a really known player because in NBA 2K, he was always high overall. And a lot of people just knew him off that. That's how I first found out who this player is. I'm not going to lie, but and he played for them from 2016 to 18 before going to the Chicago Bulls in 2018 and having a small little stint there. Was decent in the NBA. I mean, with his last season with Phoenix, he actually started 43 games of 71 um, and played 23.4 minutes per game. Three-point percentage was not good on 2.88, but had a really nice free throw of 83. Um, rebounds was 1.8. Assist per game was 4.4 and scored 7.7 .7 points per game. Then after all of this was all said and done, he'd actually eventually end up in the J League after finishing up with the Chicago Bulls, actually signing with the Sacramento Kings, but then being way for them and going to their G League, the Stockton Kings. Before that, you know, at uh, Windy City Bulls, I believe he was actually averaging 23.3 points per game um, on, yeah, bad three-point percentage on 25%. Again, but I, I believe he was actually playing pretty decent on Stockton. It was making about 50K or so on the season that he was playing in there. Well, I think he would be a very interesting player to potentially join the NBL because, again, the NBL is getting a lot more players. I think Tyler Ulis, or Ulis, I'm going to say, would be a very interesting backup point guard for one of the NBL teams and might even potentially start. For example, for those of you who haven't heard, the NBL are getting a Tasmania team, which I might make a separate video on. And yeah, um, Tasmania will be a new team in the league and will definitely need a point guard. So again, Tyler Ulis could be their new starting point guard or he could go play point guard um, back up at a potential team. Or what I think the best case would be, would be to sign with the Illawarra Hawks. Now, for those of you who didn't know, LaMelo Ball actually recently just played with the Illawarra Hawks. Um, and now he even owns them. He actually recently just bought them. But they also had LaMelo Ball and um, Scott Brooks, I believe. Oh, no, it was Aaron Brooks, sorry. Um, they had those two players, both point guards. Um, Brooks got injured, I believe, is retired now, and LaMelo Ball is going to the NBA. So they also need a starting point guard, and I believe Tyler Ulis could be a pretty decent player for them. So I think that's why he should potentially also come to the NBL. And also, he'd get paid a lot more than 50k, I would think, to potentially join the NBL. And it is obviously a very good environment, and a lot of NBA players have spoke about how much they enjoyed playing in the NBL. For example, LaMelo Ball. So I think it'd be a good idea for him to potentially come. Now, the second player, which is a player I talked about, which I think is potentially locked and loaded to kind of join the NBL, and that is Nick Young, a.k.a. Swaggy P. For those of you who didn't know, Nick Young has been talking about the NBL for like a year now. At this point, Nick Young has been talking about it for quite a bit. And even saying now, pretty much confirming when someone said, when are you going to be coming to the N uh, NBL? He actually replied back to the tweet saying next year, which I believe he said that at the end of 2019. So yeah, he would be coming in for the 2020-2021 uh, season. So that is very, very interesting. I don't know what team he will potentially sign for. I would assume it's going to be, I would assume it's either going to be the Sydney Kings or the Melbourne United. I'm not exactly too sure. Um, Nick Young actually, yeah, had a, a kind of interesting end to his NBA career. Won a championship with Golden State where he played 80 games. Averaged 7.3 points. Got 10 minutes or so in the playoffs, but then didn't get a contract. Ended up going to Denver and playing four games there. Didn't really do much. 
But yeah, now he's getting a little bit older. He's 34, turning 35. But he really does still love playing basketball. He really wants to get back into it. And he has even said, yeah, he would be very excited. And yeah, really wants to potentially play in the NBL. But again, it's just, I don't think it's a matter of um, if or, you know, all that type of stuff. I think it's a matter of when he comes to the NBL. And again, I think it's either going to be the Sydney Kings or the Melbourne United. But because, you know, Lamelo Ball brought the Illawarra Hawks, maybe he could even think about joining the Illawarra Hawks. But again, whatever team he joins, I think would be very happy to have Nick Young. And I think he'd probably be one of the best players to potentially join the NBL. And yeah, could be very good on there. Now, another player that I think could potentially join the NBL eventually is actually Zach Randolph. For those of you who don't know, Zach Randolph is... He's currently 38, turning 39, 206 centimeters. Um, yeah, he was one of the one of the best defenders that we've had pretty much uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, especially where, you know, he was good on Portland, very good on Memphis, etc. And has even been an all-star a couple of times. So yeah, had a really good NBA, uh, NBA career, sorry. For those of you who don't know, he actually owns a minority, I do believe, of the South East Melbourne Phoenix, which is pretty much one of the Melbourne teams. It's like the second Melbourne team behind Melbourne United. He actually does own a little bit of them when they were introduced into the NBA, along with a couple other NBA players. I believe Dante Exum is one of the other NBA players as well. Well, I genuinely believe that if Zach Randolph really wanted to, he could come play in the NBA for a little bit, play a couple minutes per night, and yeah, potentially actually help out his team with defense and all that type of stuff and help the younger players. Because yeah, I believe Southeast Melbourne Phoenix actually finished second last. They didn't exactly have a great year in their first year, even though they've got players like Mitch Creek. So yeah, they didn't exactly have a very good year. So even though I say Randolph is probably one of the more unlikely ones to potentially join. I still believe there is probably a fair chance that he potentially does decide to join um, the, yeah, he does decide to join South East Melbourne Phoenix. And yeah, because he does own them, I think it'd be a pretty interesting idea for him. Now, another NBA player that I think could potentially uh, join the, um, potentially, yeah, could join the NBL is actually our mature maker. For those of you who don't know, he's actually currently playing in the NBA G League. I don't actually know if he's fully an NBA player. I believe he was actually signed, yeah, he signed with the Houston Rockets, but got waived the next day and ended up signing with their G League team, the Rio Gra uh, Grande Valley Vipers. But for those of you who didn't know, he's actually related to Thom Maker, who played in the Australian team, and he's, yeah, both actually Australian. So, yeah, I think it would be pretty interesting. Currently, right now, like his brother, they do have still a pretty decent amount of potential. Like, we've seen them play at their best, especially, you know, Thom Maker. He's actually a very decent player when he's playing at his best. But again, he's very, very inconsistent. And I thought, you know, I'd also have Thom Maker eventually on this list as well, which, you know, I'd probably still going to say, yeah, Maybe even Thom Maker could potentially join the NBS, NBL, so I guess I'll still have him on this list. But I think Thom Maker will most likely get another contract in the NBA due to, you know, the Pistons starting a new rebuild and trading away Andre Drummond. If he doesn't, I think he could join the NBL, uh, you know, join the NBL. But obviously, I believe it's his brother, Mature Maker, who I also think could potentially join the NBL as well. As, yeah, I believe, yeah, growing up, in Australia as well. I think it'd be pretty interesting for him to come back and potentially join an NBL team rather than playing in the G League because obviously, yeah, he would get a lot more money here. Um, maybe not as much opportunity, but again, with the NBL becoming more and more professional and there being more and more teams, you're probably going to get a lot more notice than just playing in the G League. So I think he could potentially be another player as well. But yeah, I, I did want to quickly mention Thom Maker and Matthew Dalvadova. Honestly, I thought they could be heading into the NBL, but Thom Maker has ended up being the starting center now for Detroit because they traded Drummond. And Matthew Dalvadova has been playing out of his mind when Darius Garland got injured. So again, both those players who I thought could potentially be coming to the NBL, I think are going to be pretty safe now to potentially get another NBA contract eventually. Now, obviously there are Exactly. There's a lot of players that I think could still potentially come, but I'm going to, for the last player on this list, I'm going to talk about a player who I think most likely, like, there isn't really too much chance. I'd say there is a still small bit of chance, but I heard actually, I think a couple of people actually talking about this, and that's even maybe potentially Jamal Crawford actually coming down to the NBL and giving it a go. Look, I don't think he will come down to the NBL, so I was very hesitant to put him on this list, but there is always a small chance. I mean, he's really, really been wanting to play basketball preferably in the NBA, but he's 40 years of age. I know he's not in the NBA yet, 
But I think one chance of him potentially getting back in the NBA is if he potentially came down to the NBL, played a little bit, he'd earn himself some spare cash, got on a team, maybe even scored quite a decent amount for them, and then he could potentially get an NBA contract after his effort in the NBL. That's how I just potentially see him potentially going. So I think, yeah, even though he's quite old, he still is a relatively decent player in the NBA. Um, and yeah, I think he's probably starved of opportunity. But I think one of the only ways he could potentially get back in the NBA, especially, you know, especially for a, a decent amount of contract rather than just maybe a 10-day contract, is if maybe he came to the NBL and actually proved that he can still play basketball against competition. Because yeah, he'd be playing against players like Andrew Bogut, um, uh, Nick Young, etc. The list potentially goes on. But yeah, this is my list on potential players who I think could be joining the NBL. If you guys would like to see a part two, please comment in the comment section down below. Make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Again, most of these players I think are a massive chance like Tyler Eulis. Um, I think Nick Young are the two biggest ones um, who have a massive chance of potentially coming to the NBL. Mature Maker, I think, could come to the NBL while I also decide to touch on, you know, Thom Maker, Matthew Davido, Jamal Crawford, um, etc., who most likely won't be coming to the NBL, but there's also always a slim chance to that they could potentially come. But also, as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions? Do you guys think some of these players will come to the NBL? Do you guys think none of them will come? Do you guys think most of them will come? Or just let me know what players you guys think will come. Also, comment in the comment section down below. What are some players you think might potentially join the NBL? Again, I'd definitely really like to know. And help me out when I make a potential part two to this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel, MIRL slash vlog channel. Links for them are in the description down below, and check out my podcast as well if you haven't already. Links for that will be in the description down below. So as I was saying, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.